Hello, this is Anne McQueen, writer and advisor from McQueen Philanthropic. I'm speaking with you today on behalf of Animating Democracy, a program of Americans for the Arts. I'm working with Animating Democracy to create a series of papers and podcast interviews featuring the stories of grant makers that support arts organizations and artists with the intention of affecting social change. The series hopes to inform, inspire, and activate funders to support arts and cultural activities as a creative strategy to achieve such mission-related goals as advancing social and economic justice and reforming our education, health, or criminal justice systems. Joining me today is Diana Barrett, founder and the president of the Fledgling Fund, along with Sheila Letty, the foundation's executive director. The Fledgling Fund is a private foundation launched in 2005 that seeks, as its mission statement states, to inspire a better world. It does this by supporting the work of documentary filmmakers and building the evolving field of social issue documentary film and media. Welcome, Diana. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you. Good morning. Good Good morning. morning. Uh, Let me start by asking you, Diana, about the impetus behind launching this fund. How did you arrive at the foundation's emphasis on audience outreach and engagement? Well, I had a long academic career, which I loved, at Harvard University. And as you know, the world of academics, at least at that period of time, was largely based on words. Words were the calculus. It was the the, uh, mechanism by which people communicated. And I felt that as important as that was, that times were changing. We were beginning to use many, many more visual imagery in the classroom, many more visual cases. And I thought that the image actually was a way of telling a story that made more sense than words or that could be used in conjunction with words. Um, Since then, we really found out that neuroscience research suggests that building empathy, which is basically what we're trying to do, is more easily attained by changing brain pathways, and that can be done more easily with images than with words. So it was really my interest in seeing what could be done with images. A very early um, impetus, very specifically, was I was asked to come and look at very early footage on a film called Born into Brothels. And I've been to India many times on research trips through Harvard, and so I knew India very well. And when I saw this film about prostitution and um, the world's young girls in Calcutta, it really rang home in a way that nothing I had ever written had rung home or had made such an impact. That So we ended up supporting the end of that production of that film and some very early outreach efforts, although at that point the field was really non-conceptualized. It was really mostly production that it's finishing the film. And that film went on to win the Best Documentary Award, best the Oscar for Best Award uh, for Best Documentary that year in 2005. So that was a nice entry into the field. But then at that point, um, Sheila and I really had to, t- to, to speak very, to do a lot of research and figure out where in the continuum of film funding our reasonably limited funds as a family foundation could best be spent. And it turned out that it really wasn't in production because production just requires too many funds. So we really made up this idea of impact and community engagement. Now it's a very, very active field, as Sheila and I will talk about. But in 2005, the words didn't even exist. So that's really how we got involved. Hmm figured how can we take a film and use it as a vehicle for social change. And that that idea turned out to be the field of impact. Mm -hmm. Um, So how do you choose what films to support? Uh, Are there important issue areas to the foundation? Yeah, we are somewhat issue agnostic because we felt that it was really up to the NGOs of the world who were working on important topics and on the filmmakers of the world who were the creative minds behind the topic to really tell us what the most important issues were that they are worried about and thinking about and working on. But we do have a number of issues that are available on our website that we are interested in. But more importantly, we have certain criteria that we are extremely careful to really stick to on an ongoing basis. Um, And again, all of this is available on our website, but we feel that a film has to be absolutely compelling. In other words, you have to really want to watch the film uh, regardless of the importance of the issue. It has to be an engaging story. Um, We hope that the film can be used to either raise the temperature of an ongoing cultural conversation 
um, because if it's not part of the cultural lexicon, it's really not going to be able to play the role that we think it can play. A good example is that five or six years ago, we were not getting any film, films on the issues of transgender children. Uh, in fact, it was just not even on our it was not even on our radar. And now a number of films have come in on that subject, and they are very important films. But it's also part of a much more broad cultural conversation, which was not happening five years ago. So I'd say it's a mixture of finding the film that we think is engaging and well-made enough that it will carry the topic, to find a film on a topic that we think is of interest to many people, that will either raise awareness on the issue, sometimes people know nothing about it, Sometimes it's a very well-known issue like sexual trafficking um, or environmental issues, but we feel that this particular film can move the dialogue forward. Sometimes it's a film that we think is going to add to the ongoing strong movement about, for example, immigration. So I would say, number one, the quality of the film, number two, the way it fits into the cultural conversation, and number three, the capability of the filmmakers and other people to really use the film as a springboard for action. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks. Um, Sheila, can you give us some examples? Sure. I mean, as Diana said, we work across, you know, a range of issues, and our funding um, happens in, in different ways. Sometimes it's an early planning grant um, to help a film. Sometimes it's a filmmaker coming with the, you know, with the film completed, and they already understand what their strategy is um, for change and come to us really and ask us, for funding to help implement that strategy. Um, two, you know, projects that I'd like to touch on briefly that we um, have supported in very different ways, um, in their very different kinds of films, but I think they represent this whole concept that impact with film can happen in very different ways. And not every film, you know, needs to go to Sundance to have an impact, although some do and have incredible impact. So the first one I want to talk about is a film called American Promise. Um, which actually did go to Sundance. It premiered um, in 2013. Um, But Fledgling was involved in that film um, starting in 2010. And it is a long project. Um, It was 13 years in the making um, and followed um, a family. The filmmakers actually followed their children and um, another family as they made their way through an elite private school um, in New York City, and it focuses mm-hmm. on the um, achievement gap among, young, among black boys. And their goal was really to close that achievement gap or at least begin that process and contribute to that, the, the long social change process that will happen. And Fledgling came in with an early planning grant um, in 2010 to really help them start thinking about what their theory of change was Um, They were talking to all kinds of experts. They were incredibly committed and smart filmmakers um, who had worked with a number of experts, but they really needed some help in their, you know, in their organization to manage that process. Um, And what they ended up with is a pretty amazing and comprehensive campaign um, where they have targeted, you know, educators and parents and youth um, with different tools and different strategies. So while their overall goal is to, you know, close the achievement gap, they really have segmented um, their approach and have had tremendous impact even within, you know, a year. Um, They've created tools for educators, um, uh, including a professional development module and curriculum um, that over 14,000 educators are using. Um, They've been to conferences, facilitated conversations with influential, high-level people who can really make, you know, change or begin to think about policies um, in the educational system that will help um, affect this issue. And I think probably one of the things that they're most proud about um, as parents um, is the focus on parents and parental engagement in the process. Um, They have started over 23 um, promise clubs, which are kind of small Um, advocacy groups within communities, and their goal was really to help parents understand that the struggles that they may be having with their children are not struggles that they alone are having, that it's not isolated, and that working with, you know, other parents, they can begin to build support for one another, and they've created specific tools, including, you know, mobile apps and other things Mm -hmm. to really build that community of support with parents. 
Um, and the other thing that they've done is created a youth module that is um, – there's tremendous um, footage of two of the two boys um, throughout their career um, at, at, um, at Dalton and at um, Brooklyn High School. And they began to – they kind of pulled out those things as, as tools to engage youth in conversations around implicit bias, around expectations, around the educational system. So it's a large um, campaign. Um, I think their budget for outreach alone was over a million dollars. Um, and what Fledgling provided were really strategic grants throughout that process that helped them fill the gap. So if they had a big grant to fund kind of that mobile app, maybe they needed to really um, shore up support within their organization. Um, so that is, you know, hmm one kind of large project where we play mm -hmm. a role. That's a very deep course, strategy. Um, um, over the course of many years. Um, and it's one that we're incredibly proud of. Mm -hmm. But it represents a large project with many funders. Mm -hmm. um, another one that I think is quite interesting, and, it, it's, and I didn't intentionally do this, but it's also within the education field, um, is a project called The New Public, which is a um, film that did not go to Sundance. Um, but it's a very powerful film that focuses on the launch and um, follows them over, I think, three years of a new small high school um, in Brooklyn focused on arts. And it not only follows the children, but also the teachers and the principal. And it talks not only about the struggles that the students have as they kind of navigate um, you know, their high school career, but also the teachers as they really form and create this school and what it takes really to build a culture um, and to make sure that you have everything on track to really help these kids get through school and graduate. Um, and it shows, you know, the challenge and their, where they had missteps and where they had successes. Um, the filmmakers came to us with a very small request, um, not very small, but relatively small compared to other projects. Um, I think our first grant was $12,000 to that project, and it was to really leverage their festival tour and focus on pre-service teachers, so to connect that film with teachers and teachers' colleges um, and educators as they think about um, working in these urban schools. Um, and they really got some great traction. They got a terrific review in the New York Times. They have a, um, the Columbia Teachers College has developed a curriculum, and a number of teachers colleges have actually incorporated the film in their teacher training programs um, because it really gives kind of an in-depth, real experience um, for these you know teachers in in training who often are focused very much on the theoretical. So going back to Diana's academics, they're reading a lot of words, but when they see the actual visual of what mm -hmm. it takes to manage and run a school, um, it's a quite a powerful tool for them, and it has started um, really um, in-depth conversations um, among you know parents and students, but also teachers and administrators. Yeah, those are great examples. Thank you. Um, so you've both use the word impact a lot. Um, Diana, how do you track that? How do you gauge the success of an outreach and engagement strategy? Well, it's really interesting because the, um, the interest in the field now in the concept of evaluation and outcome and metrics it has become huge just over the past 18 months. There are two or three major tools that have come out on the subject, and yet it's something that we at Fledgling have thought about for a long time because we have a very limited amount of money, so the issue is how can we best invest our money? And I think of it much more as from a venture capital perspective. If we had X number of dollars, where are we going to put it, and how can we figure out if we've really gotten benefit for our funding? So it's something we think about a lot, but I'm kind of amused as to how much attention it's now getting. It's a complicated issue, Anne, because we can talk about – how many people have, for example, how, many, how active is it in the Twitter world? How active is it on Facebook? In other words, how much social media presence does the film have? Which can certainly say there is a lot of activity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the issue itself has been really affected in any kind of a realistic way. So I would say we are conceptual and somewhat academic in our approach to it in that we have a very firm understanding that no one film is going to change the conversation on anything, whether it's 
education, as Sheila was talking about, whether it's immigration and whether it's conservation, you know, it's not going to happen. But a film can certainly play a role and sometimes a very strong role. But there's all sorts of data contamination. There's all sorts of other things going on at the same time. There are the David Cokes of the world that are, that are putting a huge amount of money into the other side of the issues that we usually take. So it's really hard to do that. We look at it, though, using a series of internal tools. We have something called SparkWise, which is, something, which is a tool that we've been backing for a number of years. And it's an open source visualization tool that allows us to real-time track um, what, what is going on with social media, what is going on, and how many screenings are going on around this film, et cetera. And we now ask all of our grantees, all of our filmmakers, to fill out a dashboard uh, on SparkWise. And again, those are available on our website, and it's very interesting to see because you can see all of the activity around a specific film. But fundamentally, we think that evaluation has to be looked at as a quantitative effort and a qualitative effort. And it has to go back to what were the goals of the film in the first place. Sometimes the goals are to really point out how many girls on campuses have been affected by negative social, negative sexual activity. Sometimes it's, um, it's a goal of really raising the issue about how many 10-year-olds come across the border in an immigration situation. And so therefore, our impact would be, has it raised awareness? Do more people seem to be talking about it? Is it on the blogosphere? And sometimes it's a question of, has this really changed policy? And there we would say, has the film gone to Congress, like The Invisible War, for example, or The Bully Project? Has it reached uh, lawmakers? Has it reached, um, has it affected the conversation among people in each state that are likely to really make a difference? Uh, the, the house I live in about drug policy is a good example of that. Um, so for each one, we're very realistic about saying, what are our reasons for taking on this film? What do we think it can achieve? And how has it been able to achieve those goals? But it's a very complicated area, as anybody in the outcome and evaluation field will tell you. And if anybody says that their film changed the world in this way, <laughs> I would say their film was part of a broad-based, multi-platform a series of inputs that perhaps over time will change the situation or the conversation or change policy. But we like to be on the curve of the cultural conversation and to better understand who is saying what out there. And we then we think about how the film can work into that ongoing, in a sense, it's kind of a series of streams and tributaries. It's not one river. It just, life is never quite that simple. I mm -hmm. kind of wish it were, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, and, don't we and, all? <laughs> and can um, I just add to that, too, because one of the things yes. that we do at Fledgling as well is we work closely with our filmmakers to really help them think through what their theory of change is, and we understand that this social change process as Diana was saying, is really complicated and often very long-term. So we're also looking at kind of thinking about how they, how they contribute to their broader change effort and help them map those indicators at the beginning so that then they can track against them. So mm -hmm. we're all kind of on the same page when they start, um, getting really specific about what they realistically can achieve with the funding provided. Mm-hmm. Um, that's great. That's a very realistic view, too, as well as a as, as deeply informed one. Um, one more quick question. Uh, I know that the Foundation also invests in the broader f uh, issues of strengthening the field of social documentaries. Um, how, do you, how do you do this? How are you strengthening the field and expanding support for, for these kinds of films? Well, at the beginning, uh, let's say between 2005 and 2005, eight or ten, we really um, tried to contribute to other groups, for example, Latino filmmakers or filmmakers who are struggling to really get heard. Um, we contributed to, let's say, impact and outreach conversations at film festivals. Um, and those are all, I think, important. It's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to figure out if you're really having an impact or not. What we're most excited about in the past uh, 18 months or so is we started something called the Fledgling Engagement Lab that's been um, supported by both the Ford Foundation and the Dobkin Family Foundation. 
And the reason that's so important is we've taken a small number of filmmakers and we put them through basically an 18-month program that includes a very intense short residency and is followed up by many workshops and conversations and input from experts. So over time, they have both the ability to learn from people that have done engagement campaigns before, but probably equally important to learn from one another. So they can say, you know, I'm doing this website, but I'm really having trouble getting such and such off the ground, and the other person can say, well, I did this, and let me tell you what I've learned. So it's building a cadre and a community, which is so important for filmmakers. I mean, I think something we often forget is, for example, we'll wonder why a film has been so long in completion. And then it turns out that the person has a full-time job. You know, the Hmm. economic world of the filmmaker is very, very challenging. Um, There are very few filmmakers that are out there really supporting themselves and their families. So, again, um, to give them as much impetus as they can and to build a community and a cohort group among filmmakers and to teach them everything that we know, I think, is enormously important. So we're very proud of that. We've just finished our the beginning. We're still in the first one, but we have the residency in the spring. And uh, we continue to do frequent update phone calls with all the film, with the eight filmmakers in the program. And we will continue this project over time. But I think that over in the long haul will actually have the greatest impact on the field. And I think it can be measured somewhat more easily than simply giving money to a uh, film festival. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the other thing about that is beyond the, the eight um you know, participant projects that are participating in that lab. Um, you know, they're learning from us, we're learning from them, and then the idea this spring is to really start sharing those lessons out with the field so that it, it begins to strengthen not only the work of these eight filmmakers, but presumably our other mm-hmm. grantees and then the broader filmmaking community. Mm-hmm. Great. So it'll have a magnifying effect. Um, thank you both for sharing uh, your work. This is quite interesting. Uh, listeners, this was just a, a brief overview of the work of the Fledgling Fund. Uh, please go to their website to read more about this foundation. Uh, you can also learn more about other foundations' grant making in the arts and social change on the Animating Democracy website at animatingdemocracy.org. The site also includes a number of other resources, including papers about evaluation, in-depth case studies on arts-based civic engagement projects, an archive of webinars, and a directory of other funders doing this work. Uh, Thank you, Diane and Sheila, and uh, thank you uh, for listening to us.